Okay, so what we're gonna cover a little bit, and, and I've got way more here than we'll have time to cover, okay? Um, but maybe it'll give you some examples. There's two things. One is, is warm-up drills, or the way to warm up. And then the second one is some competitive games. And some of them are, are one and the same, as you'll see. Uh, some things. Warm-ups have a tendency to be influenced by tradition. So how many of you have your team's uh, jog before you start playing? Anybody? Okay, that's tradition. And I mean, it's, none of this stuff is felonious. It's not felonies, but the, the thing is, I'm, well, let me back up even. How many um, have two hours of practice? Every day? Okay, how about um, anybody have less than two hours a day? How, how, long, how long do you have? Hour and a half? Yeah. So in other words, an hour. Oh, jeez. Wait, what age? Uh, 10 and 11. <laughs> well, and I mean, wow. there's a challenge. OK, is it that, so we have just so much time that we have to train. And um, I, I know a lot of people that will warm up for 30 minutes, 20 minutes. And you think about how much less now of actual practice you have. So the question is, can you combine the both? So you're, the, I mean, they're, they're out of, <laughs> when I did that, that, that wall started to blow up. Um, is that, that can we combine warm-ups? So, I mean, once you start, they're starting with the ball. And if you think about it, what is warming up? You know, you're, war you're bringing up the, the body temperature, uh, they're mentally getting ready, um, all that kind of stuff, okay? There's also, how many of you stretch before you, then before you start playing? Yeah, I don't anymore. Um, however, when you have a, a, a team like uh, that's full, in our gym we, ha we do training and so I'm working with kids straight out. We have so much time and we go. Um, if, you, if, you, if you read the book, and, or I mentioned, I don't know if everybody heard it, but there's, it's, and it, it'll be, refer I'll reference it later on, it's, it's reference in there? It Kathy's? Is. Okay, yep. uh, Kathy DeBoer's book. I would really recommend that you, uh, you get that. It's really very good. Um, but actually, if you look at research, stretching, I mean, why do you stretch? You have to, here we go again, I asked the question why. And people say, well, it reduces injury. It, do, it doesn't. I mean, there's no known uh, research that shows that stretching eliminates injury. Now, when you have some kids that might be a, on a rehab thing, that's different. You know, they, they have to do some extra stuff. But generally, not you don't have to do much of it. And the question again is, can you combine these things so that you're, you're getting into volleyball as soon as possible? I'll give you an example of a tradition and a way that I did a little interesting study on it, is that when I was coaching the University of Washington women, um, Almost all the teams in the Pac-10, when they had their five minutes of hitting, uh, that a coach would go out and for at least a two and, uh, for two and a half minutes would toss for their hitters. Boom, 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 boom. I used to do that years ago. And, and they would do that. And so I thought, why is the coach warming up? They warm up throwing. And then I watched the teams warm up. Now they go and they put their setter in and they go back and the first five or 10 balls are hit right in the net. Okay, so they just lost, I thought. So what I did was uh, with, with our team, I devised the way we warmed up uh, so that the setter immediately is, is setting and they're setting game balls. We made them, it means game-like type balls. Now, we wouldn't make them impossible for sure.